Oh, much colder here. Well, it's all right. It's not exactly... Um, we've certainly seen far more spectacular in Alaska, northern... Oh, hang on, though. Oh, look at that. What a station. That's amazing. Look at that. Can Frank International Station. 240 metres long, with 156 doors and 365 windows, one for each day of the year. This was the second largest station in the whole of Europe when it opened for business in 1928. Now, though, it's just a ghost station, unloved and pretty much unused. So what went wrong for Canfranc International? The vast station was dubbed the Titanic of the mountains and the icebergs were coming fast. The huge structure with its tiled underpasses and elegant waiting rooms had the capacity to handle thousands of passengers each day, as well as dozens of freight trains. But that never happened. This is one of the old original booking halls from Can Frank Station. It's one of the few bits that hasn't actually fallen apart. So, in the 1930s, hundreds of passengers would come through here from France, but then there'd be great long delays while they had their passports checked. And then again, there'd be more delays while they waited for their bags to be checked by the Spanish customs. And freight operators had the same sort of delays. The source of all the delays was, surprise, surprise, our old friend, Mr. Iberian Gage. The French very reasonably asked the Spanish if they could lay just standard gauge tracks so that all the French traffic could come through this tunnel eight kilometres long and carry on right the way down to Zaragoza. Spanish would have none of it. They insisted all the Spanish tracks had to be laid from here in Iberian gauge, the wider gauge. So basically every train arriving from France, all the goods had to be taken off and moved onto another Spanish train by crane and all the passengers had to get off as well. So people were pretty fed up with the whole thing. At times during the Great Depression, as few as 50 passengers a day pass through here, making this perhaps the greatest white elephant in the history of the railways. Although in World War II, it did have its hour, albeit a very dark one. Hitler and Franco did a deal that all the illicitly stolen Nazi gold could be moved south using these rail yards here, now long abandoned, while all the tungsten from Spain and Portugal using the same route could be moved north. Meanwhile, the tunnel into the town was being used by Jewish refugees and political enemies of the Third Reich. So, during World War II, this whole town became a hotbed of Nazis, anti-Nazis, spies and saboteurs. These days, there's talk of reopening the line and turning this station into a five-star hotel, but I'm not holding my breath. 